Hey everyone, welcome back to She Tried It. In today's video, I wanted to walk you through my pattern testing process. I'm currently testing four patterns right now, which is completely unheard of for me, but I'm really enjoying myself. In this video, I'll be testing the Urban Chic Cardi by Designs by Key. If you are someone who likes my typical structure where I talk about the designer and the yarn I'm using, be sure to check out the video I did for the Summer Breeze Crop Top 2.0 because today's video is by the exact same designer. Also check out the Perfect Peplum Top by Stephanie Aaron because I'm using the same yarn in a different color for this video. There will be timestamps below so you can refer to this video whenever you are completing a pattern test in the future. Let's get started. first with pattern testing is you want to review the entire pattern with fresh eyes. This way you get an idea of how the design process will go. When reading through the whole pattern, you're more able to catch grammatical errors because you're focused on reading it and not peeking at certain lines while you crochet. I also suggest taking time to go through the pattern and highlight the stitch count for your size. This is crucial for me because I tend to be a little dyslexic at times. When my stitch count is highlighted, it massively reduces my chances for making the body following the size large and making the sleeves following the size medium. Another great thing to do at this time is to check the abbreviations on the pattern and make sure their meaning is noted at the beginning of the pattern. For example, if you see TCH and have no clue what that means and don't see anything that explains what that means, be sure to notify the designer. This is a huge help to the designer and for others that may purchase the pattern in the future. If you have been watching my channel for a while, you know that I typically delegate this task to my boyfriend. He is an artist, so color choices come naturally to him. Like I said previously, I have used this yarn before, but in a different color. This yarn is Hawthorne Finger Kettle Dye Yarn in the color Goddess. This deep and dramatic colorway spans the spectrum from the darkest plum to a medium velvet. This yarn is sold exclusively at We Crochet, who is sponsoring today's video. As you can see, this yarn comes in a hank, so it would need to be wound into a ball or skein before use. I have some extra hanks of this yarn that are for sale at my Mercari shop that is linked in the description box below. As always, I'm not trying to make a profit, I'm just clearing out my stash. Once the yarn is ready, I guess we can get started with the project, right? No, that was a trick question. This is perhaps the most important step in the pattern testing process, especially when making a garment. Making a proper gauge swatch will ensure that your piece fits you well and that you are able to provide the designer with the accurate yardage for your piece. Please do not skip this step. Another thing to pay attention to is if this gauge swatch should be blocked or not. Typically, it is swatched, and the pattern should say whether it should be, but be sure to get clarification from the designer first. This is a process in itself. I almost always have to make more than one swatch. In this case, I made three. Keisha suggested using a four millimeter hook for her swatch. I am a tight crocheter, so mine came out way too small with four millimeters. Therefore, I used a five millimeter hook and a six millimeter hook. I just made both in case the five millimeter swatch was too small as well. After blocking all the swatches, I found that the five millimeter hook was the hook for me. Okay. Our yarn is ready, our swatch is completed, and we know what hook size to use, so now we can get started. This is the part where you can relax a bit. You want to make sure you are following the pattern and making note of any modifications you're doing if the designer allows it. This is also another chance to read through the pattern. Some things make sense when you read it, but once you're actually doing it, it can seem all of a sudden confusing. If you have any tips for clarity anywhere in the pattern, be sure to notify the designer. If you're confused, it's likely someone else could get confused as well. Most designers will appreciate this kind of feedback. The order of this may vary depending on the pattern you are following. Keisha had us block the pieces individually before assembling it together. For this piece, I was finally able to try out this new goodie from Recrochet called Soak Wash. 
It is exactly what it sounds like. You can take a bucket, squirt a bit of soak in it, and let it soak. This works like a dream with the yarn I use for this piece. It makes the fiber extremely pliable. Please note that I put AND in all caps because weaving in ends for a pattern test is non-negotiable. If you are just completing a pattern on your own, feel free to hide those loose ends like most of us do. But if you're doing a test, please take the time to weave in your ends. I know this part of the process can seem a bit daunting, so I tend to give myself a separate day just for weaving in ends. I totally understand how after spending a whole day crocheting, in weaving is the last thing you wanna do. Maybe try taking a break and then coming back to it later. That typically works pretty well for me. This is arguably the most fun and most important part of the process. Pattern testers wear a lot of hats, but I feel like one of the most important ones is promotion. It's great to provide awesome feedback to the designer, but I think the real goal is helping them get customers. I could be totally wrong on this, but any designers watching, let me know how you feel. Some people don't enjoy taking photographs, and depending on the designer you're testing for, that might be totally fine. Believe it or not, I was actually one of those people, and I still kind of am. I'm not comfortable in front of the camera, but I have found that I get a tiny bit better each time I do it. Be sure to post pictures on your Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Pinterest, Ravelry, everything. Even wear it out so that when people ask you where you bought your cute cardigan from, you can say, this is the Urban Chic Cardi by Keisha of Designs by Key. There is no need to go all out for this process if you don't want to. Just be sure to have good lighting and a smile. We did all that work. Now it's time to give the designer what they asked for on time. Designers should let you know exactly what they want and when they want everything due when you first sign up for the test. But life happens, so if for some reason you realize that you will not be able to meet the deadline, let the designer know immediately. I heard from a designer once that they appreciate when testers who don't meet the deadline actually purchase the pattern once it's released. This is a small gesture you can do to show that you do really apologize and that you value their time. Thank you again to Recrochet for sponsoring today's video. I hope you find these steps to be helpful as you complete your next pattern test. Don't forget to check the description box below for all the things I mentioned in this video. If you have ever completed a pattern test before and have any additional tips, be sure to leave them in the comments below. I'm sure I missed something. See you in my next video. Bye.